Hello, this is Claude, and today's video is about the uh, new Corsair K100 keyboard, uh, which is a great keyboard, uh, but it's not perfect, but almost there. Uh, so in order to make it better, uh, I will show you how I personally change my switches, and uh, by the same token, uh, you will see the inside of the keyboard, which would be the first uh, on YouTube, because I've looked for it everywhere on YouTube to see if any of the uh, tech YouTubers had to open the keyboard and showed how to open the keyboard and it's not there. So as the recording of this video, uh, that I will show you how to do that. Uh, so uh, now I'm going to talk about what I did to open and uh, during the edit I will show the, 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 the steps uh, for uh, replacing the, the switches uh, going from uh, the um, uh, going from the uh, Cherry MX Silver uh, to the Pandas and I'm showing you a panda right here. The panda keys are kind of yellowish, linear, 67, uh, not linear, but tactile, and 67 grams uh, of uh, of a CN, a centi newton. Uh, that's the force you apply. It's about the same thing as grams, all right? 67 grams more or less, all right? So uh, to be able to open the thing, you need, uh, you know, you've got screws on the bottom, but the two screws on top, there are two screws under there. Do not remove the top plate. You will break it if you put the heat gun. Uh, you will actually, it will bubble, and there's a PCB connected to it somehow. So there's no way without dest destroying it to remove that. There's nothing to remove over there, so you remove all the keycaps first. There are 16 or 17 screws. I will put the number on the screen uh, on the top plate, so you remove this. Once this is done, you turn your keyboard around. And, uh, and oh, by, before doing that, on the top part, on the top portion of the keyboard, the media keys, the wheel, the, the, the mute button, and then the encoder wheel, and then the two, these switches, uh, you don't need to remove that either. Uh, there, it's not, uh, it doesn't connect to the bottom plate of the keyboard, all right? So just remove the normal keycaps, the macro keycaps, remove the screws, turn the, the, the keyboard around. You're gonna have, uh, under that, uh, you will have, uh, 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 four screws uh, under the, the keyboard, right, uh, on the bottom plate. So uh, the, uh, the, the, the four screws is, there's one under the Corsair sticker. Me, I just heated the sticker, gently removed the sticker so I didn't break it. I just put it somewhere else. Uh, and then there's uh, one under the back right rubber pad, uh, where, uh, just on the other side of the, uh, the encoder wheel. Uh, and then so you need to remove the pad. Uh, from the back and then there's another there's two ones on the other side on the back left rubber pad uh the screw size are different so you don't think there's a screw in the smaller one but there's one it's all phillips all right so uh, you remove these two screws as well and then so that's four total on the uh, the bottom part the rubber part on, uh, under the the keyboard uh there's no uh screws there so you don't need to remove them all right uh, also, like I also already mentioned, uh, there are uh, still, there's two screws under the top. Uh, I said it already, so you don't need to. What I've done is that I, I didn't remove these top screws. Uh, once I'm removing all the other screws, you're able to crank, uh, to crack open uh, the, uh, the keyboard. And I just go non-destructive, but from within the keyboard. So there's nothing apparent on the outside, all right? So what I've done for that is that when all the screws were open, like I said already, I cracked open the keyboard and I took some, uh, uh, you know, uh, snips, and then I'm gonna show them over here. Uh, I took these little snips, cracked open the keyboard, went under there. There's two black shafts and plastic shafts, and I cut it at the base of the shaft. All right, so then I was able to kind of pull uh, this uh, away on the top uh, portion from the bottom. All right, so once the keyboard is done, and then you have to be very careful when you open it and you move all the screws, you're able to uh, remove or cut the two shafts that are there from under, from the base, not from the top, so you don't cut into the screws, cut plastic to plastic. All right, and after what I've done at the base is that I cut the plastic, and then I just cut a little bit more, so when I was gonna close it back again, nothing's gonna go in and make friction and make rattle noise. All right, uh, so uh, once the uh, keyboard is open, you go back, you remove, there's, uh, I think there's eight ribbons that you need to connect, to disconnect. Uh, you remove the, the screws with the, uh, the ground screw for the USB cable, you remove all that. And the little connectors, the ribbon connectors, it's a little black plate that you just lift up and then you're able to pull the little connector out, all right. 
so uh, and also you will be when you turn this around and it's open you will see that there's the encoder switch there's two plastic legs uh, and then the plastic legs, uh, there's outer plastic legs, there's inner plastic legs with a little, uh, you know, plate in the middle, black plate in the middle. But the outer legs are melted into the PCB, all right? So on the, on one part of the PCB, if you cannot remove it. If you try to remove the encoder thing from under the plastic that's melted, you will not be able to fix that. So that will be uh, making damage that you will not be able to easily repair, all right? Uh, unless you do crazy glue and stuff, but uh, there's no point to removing it, all right? So I, you, I I didn't remove that uh, for this to not cause you know additional damage. All right. So uh, by doing this, um, so I was able to, uh, you know, because of the the encoder, I was not able to completely detach all the components and show them separately. But the goal of my video now, or the goal of the work I was doing while shooting the video, was to change the switches. I was able to change the switches. I didn't need to do anything additional and and remove that. All right. So now, you know, in, in, in order to be able to remove or to re replace the switches, per se, I desoldered all the switches. I used the Hacko desoldering tool, and I will show that on this screen. So there you go. That's the Hacko desoldering tool. All right, Hacko uh, FR-301. Uh, it's uh, three four hundred dollars. Uh, well worth it if you do electronics, like I do. Uh, so I desoldered all the switches in about five to ten minutes. Uh, it was. It's very fast process. You just need to clean the tool as you go. Up every ten switches, more or less. But it goes very fast. All right. So once I desolder all the switches, then you remove the switches with the switch removing tool. This one, for example, like that. It's not a very good one actually, uh, but uh, it did the job. You just be very careful not to scratch uh, the the front plate. All right. So that uh, that you remove all the switches. Then I was ready to take my pandas, and I actually decided to uh, sw uh, to loop the pandas. Uh, so what they lubing the pandas you open the the switches with the switch opener tool uh, I've got one right here uh, you just basically put the switch in there and I will show that but uh, you just put the switch uh, and then you just push it out and uh, and then it basically you, you're able to open the switch so uh, I lubed all the switches and I lubed the switches with the uh, tribal sys uh, 30 uh, 3204 all right so that's what I used to lube the all the switches uh, the springs, the inside of the switch, and then the stem. The stem, I did not do the little bumpy thing, the tactile thing, and you don't uh, loop that. And I also lubed uh, and clipped the stabilizers. And when I put the stabilizer back, I did put a little bit of tape uh, where there's the clicking uh, you know, me mechanism. So it would make a tight contact so there's no rattling whatsoever. Uh, all right, so that's very sturdy. All right, so uh, basically once the switch were lubed, the stabilizer was back on, lubed, clipped, and the whole thing. Uh, it's time to put back all the switches back, put the, uh, the pandas back. And one of the things that I do, the pandas came in a, a pack of 110 switches, the keyboard's 110 switches. I didn't have a single one to spare. So when you put it back, you push it back on the plate. You, I made sure on the other side that the little connectors on the switch itself, uh, that they were lining up properly. And then, uh, yeah, so that I would not bend by pushing the switch in, bend the, the thing. Uh, you can always fix it, but it's better not to. So I have to be careful. I resoldered all the switches one by one, and this took actually about 10, 15 minutes. Uh, same thing with the Hakko, uh, uh, you know, soldering iron. Uh, so basically, just go, and then you don't, you don't stop. Uh, it takes about, well, I don't know, talk about 10 minutes maybe. Uh, so that was to me the most enjoyable part of the whole thing there. Uh, once you, that was said and done, uh, ready to go, uh, everything was ready to, go, put, to reassemble. So everything in the in the reversed order that I've done already, uh, put everything back uh, and then test the, the keyboard. I've got a software for that uh, I had to test the keyboard. Uh, so I tested all the switches. Everything was a go. Everything was working just fine. Put everything back in. Uh, and um, yeah, so that's uh, that's what I've been able to do. Uh, I'm gonna l show a little bit of a, uh, a before and after. I'm a two-finger typer. When I type, I turn like this.
So uh, I hope that uh, for those who want to open the keyboard, I've uh, shed some light on how to do it. Uh, I hope that uh, so those that are looking at the keyboard to purchase it themselves, that uh, maybe it helped them to know what they can do with it, what they cannot do. But the main conclusion of this is it's an amazing keyboard. Uh, you know, give me some uh, dual shot PBT keycap, which is very easy to find. I've got some Tahoe's laying around. I can replace that by just, I don't know, F1, F2, F3. I, I can do that very easily. Uh, remove the, if they could have put instead of the ornament tree here, make a smaller wheel within the frame, don't exceed the frame. Uh, aluminum, brushed aluminum, same thing as this, would be great. And uh, the pass through, I'm gonna you know, remove the stupid cable use the pass-through and all that. And this to me would be a more or less the perfect keyboard. All right, this is production made. This is mass production made. It's not made to be open. The construction is very well done. Once they shut this thing down, uh, it's not done to be reopened. All right, so you need to understand that, that if you do this, it's still plastic. It's still, uh, you know, the top plate is aluminum, it's, it's sturdy, but the rest is easy to break, it's electronic. So you have to, to understand that it's not, uh, a custom, uh, a customizable uh, keyboard that you can get on KBD fans or something like that, which is all aluminum, all screws, all heavy duty CNC machine things. This is a lot of plastic and all that. That's gonna break. All right. So you need to understand that CD. Uh, the you know uh, what you uh, uh, you know its limitations, and by doing this, you can do the best out of it. All right. So uh, please, uh, if uh, I was helpful, please like the video. Uh, consider subscribing. It helps me knowing what if I'm doing is appreciated, and also leave a comment. Uh, I I take all constructive and, and, and positive comments, all the ones that, oh, you don't know what you're doing. I just delete them and I laugh it off. Uh, so, but uh, yeah, I like to have the comments, see if that's something that uh, helped you, what uh, you think I could do better on the uh, on the mod mod modification of this keyboard, what you did. Uh, if you did something else, uh, that would be very nice to know. So uh, thanks for watching and I will see you at the next video. Thank you, bye-bye.